Was it around that time you, you got involved in other st- studio work, session work? Yeah, actually, it wasn't until um, 1990 that I got into session work because, uh, you know, when I got the gig with Morris, the tour ended, and then I started doing other R&B tours, funk tours, with, you know, Shalimar, um, um, Pebbles, a bunch of other different R&B bands, you know, just in and out of those five years. And then in 1990, uh, a dear friend of mine, Jamie Mahobrak, a uh, keyboard player, um, introduced me to Don Was, and he um, uh, recommended me to play on this song called uh, Something to Talk About, Bonnie Raitt and that was the beginning of my like studio career there in terms of just my first real recording session in Hollywood at Sunset Sound or no I'm sorry it was uh, Ocean Way <clears throat> and um, a side note but completely related is that um, while all this is going down Joe Picaro's son Jeff Picaro the drummer from Toto was kind of keeping his eye on me and just kind of seeing what I was doing and um, he I get this call this is like actually yeah, a, a year later after my my recording date with um, Bonnie Raitt I get this call you know and I've always been a Jeff Picaro fan I've always just admired his playing and the person who he was you know when I'd go see him at play at the Baked Potato he was just the coolest guy you know and, I, and during that time any drummer that was around dress like him, try to act like him, try to wear the same glasses like him, because he just, he was beyond a great drummer. He was fucking cool. And, you know, and I don't see too many cool drummers these days. I mean, there's great drummers, and they're all cool, but he had swagger, man. He had, like, pimp shit going down. He had the rock rock and roll star. He'd walk in a room and captivate it. He had that kind of personality, you know, and he was charismatic and chicks dug him and you know it was just like he was he was the guy that every drummer wanted to be i think yeah so anyway he uh so you got to know him around that time yeah i got to actually i got to know him when i was going to school in 84 and then you know through the years i'd go see him play and i'd introduce myself and he you know he'd always say hey kurt what's going on man and you know he was just a great guy and then one day i get this phone call and um it's Jeff Picaro, but I didn't believe it. I thought it was one of my friends fucking around, you know, goofing around saying he was Jeff Picaro, but it was not. But it was him, man. He goes, hey, man, it's Jeff Picaro. Is this Kurt? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, hey, I'm producing this record, man, for Boss Gags. I want you to be the drummer. And I want you to put the rhythm section together. And I was like, who the fuck is this? Who's joking around? He goes, no, man, really, it's Jeff. And um, he wanted you to play He wanted me record. to play on the entire record because he was making the transition from drummer to producer. And I, you know, I think to this day, I, if he was still alive, he would have been probably one of the top producers out there. Definitely. Cause he just knew what felt good. He knew what, you know, what guys to put together to make the perfect track for whatever style of music. Cause mm-hmm. he could play any style of music well, yeah. you know? So he called me and it w- it was him and he wanted you to pick the bass player. He, he goes, hey, man, I've been checking you out, and I really dig your playing, and I want you to put together the rhythm section, and we're going to do a Boss Gags record for the next two weeks. All right, hold on. I mean, I just have to ask you. As someone, <laughs> no, no, seriously, a very experienced in the business that you are these right now. Have you ever seen this since? I mean, that from a producer? I want you, and I want you to pick the rhythm section? No, because... The great Rick Rubin said it best. You know, he said this probably a decade ago. He said, "You know, records now are producer driven, not band driven." And uh, you know, so I rest my case there. You know, Rick, you know, he's he's in it, so he knows, and he's a producer, and he yeah. does that. And but you know, then I think it was always based around the casting of the musicians and who could bring the best shit to the table and I think Jeff recognized in me a uh, an aspect that uh, that I could that I could bring to the table and you know he probably knew that I knew some young fresh musicians that I could bring to the table and I think that's what he wanted for Boz's thing so I did I I, I put together a rhythm section and um, it and it it worked out you know um, 
eventually got replaced on some of the tunes uh, with his brother Mike Bacar on bass. But for the most part, um, the fact that one of your drum heroes is calling you. We got it. I mean, that's the it's highest like, form of flattery. I know. Right? I could stop right there. I don't even have to fill in the rest of the blanks, man. It's like having a, your drum hero call you, you yeah. and want you to play drums for something he's a part of. That's like, that's every friggin' dream come true for any Or drummer. a nightmare. Or a nightmare. You know, yeah. and it, I thought it was going to be a nightmare, but Jeff was so friggin' cool, man. It was like... Let's talk about yeah, what it was like to work with him as a producer. Was oh he, man, was he, he hands off? Is he as far no? As he, he was he, he. Jeff definitely know knew what he wanted, and he knew how to bring that out of you without making you feel pressure. And you know, with Jeff, it was always about the groove and the vibe and the hang and and the musicality, and um, you knew right away when when you showed up with him at the studio. It was just like okay, he's we're going to make some fucking badass music today because Jeff's at the helm and I'm sitting around, you know, with these other amazing musicians and we're going to make some ridiculous music today. And, you know, and I think if you just allow the playing and the music, musicianship to happen and the musicality, there's no more to talk about. Right. There's nothing to dissect. It's, it, it is what it is, man. It's like you bring the garlic, you bring the sauce, you bring the pasta, you bring the, the vino, and it's on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. on, you know? I like that. I like that. <laughs> so. 